Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Rod and Staff podcast. I'm Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek, and joining me today from ISO is Matthew Foley. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me on, Brother Rod. Now, I was interviewed by Matthew a while back for his channel, and uh, Mm -hmm. I started watching some of his videos on his channel, and I was amazed at some of the insights that he had, and I thought, I've got to bring you on my channel to talk about Greek. Uh, The Mm -hmm. name of the channel is Jew and Greek, and uh, here's a guy who's talking about the Greek language and the Greek culture and how it impacted the uh, culture in Palestine in the time of the Bible. So I thought I'd bring him on and we'd chat a little bit about this. So Matthew, if you want to just take a few minutes to introduce yourself and give us the background on your ministry and your school, uh, just go right ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank again. Thank you for having me on. Um, so our channel is ISO Connect, and we had you on there, I don't know, maybe it's been about half a year now, uh, but we found your channel because I had basically been searching the the internet waves to see who was of like mind and spirit to us. And um, our president who started our online Bible college is uh, Dr. Brian Cutshaw, is my boss, and uh, he pretty much commissioned me a few years back to make a podcast for us and uh, started on a YouTube channel that we were launching in 2022 at the beginning of the year. So I started to do that. And uh, I had already taught some courses here for us that are fully online now. Um, And we've got, mm, I think, maybe two videos, three or four, maybe. I can't remember exactly. But a few from those courses that I taught that were my lessons put onto our channel so far. And um, one of which that was released in the last two months, I think, that you're referring to would be the Greek 101 introduction Mm -hmm. video, the first lesson out of that course. Uh, So one of the big things that we do is we come from a charismatic perspective and we teach about the Word of God and we want to get people who are around that, you know, late teenage to college age, uh, a, a, an opportunity to really find someone fully online and that's affordable, accessible to study the Word of God, but also people all the way later in years who have gone to church for many, many years and are really wanting to get deeper into God's Word. We wanted mm-hmm. to give those people, not necessarily they're looking for a degree, but just want to start hopping in and studying subjects that they may not hear taught about at the church very often. Mm-hmm. Well, um, in, you know, attachment to that, that concept of talking about the things from a charismatic perspective, but also from a rich word perspective. We had this, uh, I had this goal, I should say, to find other people on YouTube that were doing that. And unfortunately, (laughs) I was shocked to find there aren't a ton of people that are charismatic or come from even a word of faith perspective that are teaching uh, the Bible in an extreme in-depth level. And we've talked about it when you came on the podcast, our podcast, ISO Insights, Mm -hmm. that may be because so many people in the charismatic world are focused on doing the gospel rather than getting into the theological nitty-gritty. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we find that to be of such importance, and we do teach about the gifts of the Spirit, uh, but we want to get into the (laughs) nitty-gritty, and we want to do so because we believe Christian history and the Word of God support the power of God for today. And one of the things that I did get to teach here uh, was the Greek 101 introduction. Uh, We've kind of got different groups in here where we're at in Cleveland, Tennessee. That's our um, location for our center. Uh, And Basically, we had Hebraic roots and different people in town that really influenced us. We had Brother Bill Cloud teach a lot of our stuff, and he's um, a big name in the Hebraic roots movement. And uh, one of the focuses we had was Judaism and Christianity returning back to an understanding of its earliest history and how the original Jewish disciples thought of themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I had I've studied Hebrew a bit, quite a bit, and studied Greek in college. And I found something to be very interesting that led to this lesson that we've released on YouTube about how did the Jewish people end up using Greek as a major language that they they spoke? Uh, mm-hmm. Because you'll always hear preachers talk about, you know, it says in Acts that Paul spoke in Hebrew and, and some footnoted Aramaic when he was right. speaking to the crowd in Jerusalem when they were about to just beat the, the daylights out of him. Um, but it was a mystery of, okay— the, the Jewish people did know Greek, and they were introduced to it through a series of historical events. But um, I, I'm really glad to be able to talk about the subject with you today. And I, we've talked on the phone before 
how the the balance of the Jewish concept of revelation and the Greek concept of logic and order and the natural world really merge together to form Christianity as it's mm-hmm. become. And I love that about your channel. Yeah, I've always had a, a fascination with the Greeks. Uh, mm. Of course, being a Christian, I, I have an appreciation for Judaism, the Torah, and and the uh, the Jewish people, and uh, especially the Jewish culture in the, in the time of Christ. But I've also uh, been fascinated with the uh, the Greek philosophers, Socrates, Plato, mm. Aristotle. Uh, if I had to name the three people that I like the most outside of the Bible, uh, I'd probably be Aristotle and mm. da Vinci and Bach. Really? Uh, wow, that's a lineup. Yeah, a a Greek, an Italian, and a German. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. but I'm not going to call my my channel Italian, Greek, and German. But it may not get uh, as many uh, attra- as much traction. Right, it just doesn't have the same ring to it. But anyway, yeah. uh, but no, Aristotle was a fascinating guy mm. because pretty much uh, Western culture has <clears throat> developed by means of the scientific method, which is based on Aristotle. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, the uh, the whole idea about uh, gathering uh, empirical data, analyzing, forming hypothesis, and and uh, testing the hypothesis to develop a theory and so forth. Mm. Um, yeah, logic, uh, all of these things. Of course, I, I worked in the computer field for years, and you have to use logic uh, to mm-hmm. work with computers. Um, because if you get the logic wrong, it don't work. So yeah. even if you got all the syntax and, and, and you code everything just right, if the logic doesn't work, the program doesn't run. And so I've always had a, a, a an appreciation for logic as well. I didn't really study logic uh, mm-hmm. in, in school, but I had to develop an appreciation for logic in the computer field. Anyway, um, yeah, Aristotle is a really cool guy. A lot of people don't realize that uh, <clears throat> the Alexander the Great – who conquered the world when he was in his early 20s, was tutored by yeah. Aristotle. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so, there you go. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah uh, that is, that, that's why, um, I'm sorry, I, I'm cutting good. you off, but that was why when I uh, watched that video, Introduction to Greek, where you not only talked about the language, but how the language evolved Mm. That I think was fascinating. So uh, if you could, uh, you know, just after you say what you were going to say, uh, go ahead and go into that a little bit. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, and it's kind of connected what I was thinking about, but my neuron, like my brain's firing off right now. Cause you're saying so <laughs> many things that I care about. <laughs> mm. So, um, w- what's really interesting to me is the perspective and because what we talk about is when people preach about a gentile or greek mindset versus a jewish mindset they're talking about a way of perceiving theology most Mm -hmm. of the time i find um and it really behind that a worldview and a way of looking at uh the stories of god but anyway i'll get into it basically um in the lesson that i did where we talked about the introduction of greek into the jewish culture uh it was it was that historically philip the father of Alexander the Great, who was a Macedonian ruler. Technically, uh, Philip and Alexander weren't Greek. They were Macedonian. Uh, Mm -hmm. So it wasn't necessarily their native language. But Philip had noticed so much order in the thought of uh, the Greek world, especially Athens, that he took the dialect from Athens of Greek, Attic, and he said, you know what? We're just going to implement this as the Macedonian language. So we're going to take on Greek culture. So it's funny, just like the Romans admired Greek culture because of its philosophy and its law and its Mm -hmm. order, uh, they did the same thing, the Macedonians, and they caused Hellenistic culture uh, and thought to spread. So Aristotle, like you said, was uh, over Alexander and implemented uh, his teaching, training, the way that he would think. And as that began to, to age, it I could talk about the history. There are two directions that I think of when you mentioned what you talked about and the development of Christianity. Um, there's a history of how the Jewish people in Judea and Palestine ended up merging together 
with uh, the certain Greek influences. And the relationship of the Jewish people with Greek influences is really interesting historically uh, because of their relationship with Greece and Rome. Uh, so, you know, the Jewish people basically ended up speaking Aramaic because Cyprus, Cyrus, the Persian, overthrew Babylon. So the script that Hebrew has today comes from Babylon. Uh, before that, they had like Paleo-Hebrew script, and it looked more hieroglyphic. But they took on the Babylonian script, and then Cyrus overthrew Babylon, returned them back home, established the temple, and the Persian trade language was Aramaic. So the Jewish people, by a long stretch of time, took on the Aramaic language. But then, of course, Alexander overthrows the Persians, the Medo-Persians, and he takes over the regions and is divided between his four generals after he dies. But the, tr the trade language goes from Aramaic to Greek. And the relationship the Jewish people had with Greek, however, is a bit different than Aramaic because, of course, Antiochus of Epiphanes came and ended up desecrating the temple, making Jewish literature illegal, murdering uh, leaders that were among the, especially religious leaders among the Jewish people until the Maccabees overthrew him. So the sentiment of the Jewish people towards the Greeks was very different than towards the Persians. So right. they probably were more comfortable in retaining Aramaic in their common discourse, which is why Jesus in his day, they still spoke Aramaic and resisted Greek being the main language. Um, and one thing that we talked about on the, the phone, I think last night, was that in the Western Roman Empire, Latin was the primary language because it was native to you know Rome. But in the Eastern Empire, they still used Greek because of the immense respect Rome had for uh, Alexander the Great in the Macedonian Empire. And they just thought, the Latins thought that Greek was an upper class language of philosophers. Mm -hmm. So they were like, we're going to keep it just because we think it's superior. Uh, and Latin was thought of to be a more common vernacular. Mm -hmm. But what's so interesting to me is um, you mentioned last night, Jesus, uh, the, the New Testament says that in the fullness of time, God revealed his son, sent his son of the world. Right. Now, this idea of fullness of time, you know, you could talk about how Rome facilitated, you know, and the, the, the what was it, lingua franca of right. Greek and Latin facilitated such a, a strong discourse among different cultures more than ever before so that Pax Romana, the peace that the Roman Empire had, made it easy for the gospel to spread to all these different cultures. Right. Um, what I think that really relates to your channel, that's incredible, is an early church father, Justin Martyr, who was uh, really big into teaching and cate creating a catechesis for the Christian faith. But he was a huge debater with pagans in his day. And a lot of these pagans were really into old school philosophical ways of thinking. And Christians were still miracle workers, casting out demons, spreading <clears throat> the, the narrative of the gospel. But um, they were being judged like as they, they were ignorant and stupid people because they weren't mm -hmm. the rich. They weren't the, those that were involved in higher learning. And Justin Martyr actually said, Moses is like the true philosopher and Christianity right. is the true philosophy. So he says, he actually argues, I thought this was incredible when I learned it in college, that Aristotle was a noble pagan who God uh, Socrates even, he says he believed that Socrates had heard from God and without realizing it had been given a revelation by the one true God because he was pushing against the, um, the polytheism of his day and mm -hmm. indicating in his teachings there had to be a single source that all things come from. So uh, it's, it's interesting to see, at least in Christianity, how much Greek thought was an influencer on how to, to think orderly and how to uh, eventually how to create theology, and that I think that really led to system, excuse me, a systematic theology eventually mm -hmm. for the Christian Church. But uh, what are your thoughts about that? I know I just mentioned a lot of things, but we'll take yeah. it whatever direction you want to go. Well, the first thing that came to my mind when you were saying all that is the uh, lingua franca, that they had a common language throughout the mm -hmm. Roman Empire, and uh, now I didn't know about the Latin 
in the first century. I thought Latin didn't come along until the second century uh, mm. as far as being widespread. But uh, that's something I learned from you is that mm. Latin was prominent in Western Europe in the first century. Uh, mm. But the whole idea that some people put out there, cessationists will say that uh, they needed to speak in tongues to preach the gospel to all these different countries. Yeah. <laughs> And that they preach the gospel in tongues. Mm -hmm. You know how do how do you uh, how do you uh, make that work when you've already got this concept of Pax Romana and a lingua franca? You've you've got all roads lead to Rome, and everybody's mm -hmm. got a common business language, Koine Greek. They didn't need to speak in tongues to preach yeah. the gospel. They had a common language. Tongues was a sign to the unbeliever. And the Bible clearly says that, but that you still see this narrative among cessationists. You know, well, yeah. tongues was to spread the gospel. No, no, tongues was to confirm the gospel mm. uh, supernaturally. Then, but uh, then yeah. there's other things that, uh, that come to mind when we're talking about uh, the, the culture of that day is uh, the, well, for one thing, in Palestine, you had... Uh, you had a division between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, one thing that I learned early on was that the Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection. That's, but I didn't realize until years later that the Sadducees were kind of the liberals of yeah. that day. Mm -hmm. And the Pharisees were kind of the fundamentalists. And Absolutely. Uh, so there was kind of a, a division because the Greeks were coming in and through Hellenization, that's what they call it, the, the Greekizing of the Jewish world, Hellenization came in and the Jewish people started dressing like the Greek people. They started mm -hmm. acting like the Greek people. Well, the Pharisee didn't like that. that mm -hmm. That's just, just like fundamentalists today don't like to see Christian people acting like the world. Mm. And, you know, to a certain extent, that's justifiable, you can, but you can get into legalism. But the point is, they had liberals and fundamentalists back yeah. then, too. And uh, that was <clears throat> due to the Greek influence. So you, you really not, you're not going to understand a lot of the New Testament without understanding that dynamic. Mm -hmm. and, and and beyond the New Testament, just the first few centuries, the, the influence of, of Greek thought was just enormous. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that uh, Socrates, in a way, even though he didn't have a background in the Torah and he didn't have the revelation from God, he was a truth seeker. Yeah. And uh, he was willing to die for the truth mm -hmm. as he understood it. And, uh, of course, he, he drank the hemlock. Was was it hemlock? I think it was. That's what it that sounds right to me. I recall yeah. being that. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, that was his punishment. All he had to do was recant. All he had to do mm -hmm. was say, I'm sorry, you know, I'll, you know, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Just don't kill me. But he said, <laughs> no, just, just take my life. You know, yeah. uh, I'll die for the sake of the truth because uh, he saw how corrupt Athens was. And and how when you get into a, a government that large and that uh, that powerful, how corrupt it is and corrupting. Yeah. And uh, they accused him of corrupting the youth, but actually they were the ones corrupting the youth because they were opposed to the concept of truth. So mm. anyway, but I, then another thing I learned from you, I I knew about classic Greek and I knew about Koine Greek. I never heard of Attic Greek, that there was a kind of a, mm. a middle ground Greek. Yeah. And uh, so if you would talk about that a little bit. Um, I think that as far as my memory serves, because I'm, you know, I'm not the expert on ancient forms of Greek. But, you know, uh, the, the common Greek, Koine, common Greek, that uh, it's called common because of its uh, presence in the Roman Empire. Uh, but the earlier forms of Greek before Macedonian, the Macedonian Empire under Alexander spread the language and made it common, uh, what was broken up into regional dialects. You know, you had different dialects in Sparta versus Athens in those different original Greek tribes that Philip and Alexander fully conquered. Um, but... The Attic, I know there's like, I think it's called Ionic uh, Greek is another form. There's a few, but I can immediately off the top of my head say Ionic and Attic Greek. But because Attic came from Athens, it was associated with 
uh, all the schools of philosophy that came out of there, and it was seen as the intellectual's language. And uh, you can imagine that it, what's interesting to me about that, you, you'd mentioned uh, a moment ago about uh, the, the progression of logic and uh, how people view logic. You mentioned computers, and uh, I took symbolic logic classes before, which is like the, the fundamentals of computer code. But the idea, like Socrates, having the idea that we're going to boil things down. Like we even had a conversation before Socrates, uh, in his day, people who, like lawyers, were hired to argue a certain case, they were referred to as rhetoricians, and their focus was on how to craft a very compelling argument and the three Sophistry. different... Yeah. And, and that was a different way of thinking than this idea that there is objective, unchanging truth, mm -hmm. and that everything else is... Uh, basically built on that, and everything else proceeds off of it. So mm. that idea, Socrates came up in his method of doing it, uh, of getting down to the brass tacks and the root of something, which is continually just ask why, which apparently was what annoyed everybody. He would mm. go and embarrass these rhetoricians because they would be appealing to all these strategies for their arguments. But he'd just keep on asking them really simple questions mm. until they, they just ran out of gas. They didn't know what else to say. And he would say, well, then you don't, you don't know anything. And I right. think Socrates said, the, I must be the smartest man in all of Greece because at least I know enough to know that I don't know anything at all. He and was the rest like, didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, the but that's why Justin Martyr made the statement of he had such respect for the Greek philosophers because he recognized that the he really believed Gentiles would have no bandwidth for truth for the revelation of the Jewish people and the idea that there is one God and He is unchanging. And that uh, he is, you know, transcendent above all and all come from him. They never would have had in their polytheistic worldview anything to connect that with unless God had sent Socrates and Aristotle, Socrates with this idea of truth and that there must be a source of all things. And Plato furthered the, that thought. Aristotle believed in the unmoved mover. The prime was, mover. Yeah, exactly. So. Justin Martyr said, I don't see all these Greek philosophers that you pagans out there love. I don't see how their biggest, like their biggest things they argued for match up with your worldview. It seems to me they argue more for Christianity and they just didn't realize it yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's intellectually God prepared the road. I think Justin Martyr was on to something. Well, the objective of uh, sophistry or persuasion was to get people to believe what mm. you believe or or what your client uh you know if, what's in your client's best interest because they they had a like a uh, advocate system employed mm. there where they used uh the sophists or the mm. uh, the arguers and uh their objective was persuasion socrates's objection was truth Ob mm. objective was truth and they were diametrically opposed and that's why Socrates had no use for the sophists because they had no appreciation for truth. Mm -hmm. They just, you know, they just wanted to argue somebody's case for money. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was their God, I guess, in a sense. But um, yeah. anyway, that that really established through Socrates uh, an appreciation among many of the Greeks for the concept of truth, which eventually you know, fit well with the Christian concept mm. of truth. You remember Jesus told, uh, was it uh, Pilate, that uh, he came to uh, testify of the truth, and he says, what mm. is truth? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, that was a, that was a foreign concept to many people, mm. in that what, what is truth? You know? Wow. Well, the only thing that's true, as far as we're concerned, is what Caesar says, yeah. you know? That's that's the wow. only truth we care about is, is if we you know if we raise a hand to Caesar we die, that's our truth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, but there is a, an eternal truth, a transcendent truth that Jesus came to testify of, and I think that, that was the truth that Socrates was seeking. I'm not saying Socrates is in heaven. I don't know, mm. but I do think that uh, you know it was we're told in Romans that uh, you know if you if you go by what revelation that you have, God judges you based on that.
Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, but uh, Matthew and I could just talk for hours. I've I've found that uh, we both have an appreciation for the supernatural uh, and and the Pentecostal theology, but at the same time, yeah. we, we'd love to get into this kind of stuff and just go on and on and on. But uh, we're going to have to wrap it up here in a few minutes. If you want to uh, just introduce people to your school and the curriculum and uh, your channel and, and all those details, uh, just go ahead and fill them in. Absolutely. So I do work for International School of the Word Bible College. We call it ISO Bible College for short, and that's what you see on our website. But basically, we our goal is to bring the word to the world in a, you know, in a, a sentence, a short sentence. And we're here to be affordable, accessible, and to give a quality education to people that are trying to reach out. Uh, you can use our content to transfer it over uh, on, on a transcript for uh, college credit to a specific Bible college that's fully online as well that we're in partnership with. Uh, but we are here to basically, like I said at the beginning, give people access to the th- deeper things of God's Word from a, a charismatic charismatic evangelical perspective, we'll call it, uh, and to, to learn about deeper subjects of theology. One thing that we teach that's very different from a lot of Bible colleges is uh, not only the, not only the gifts of the Spirit and how to operate in them and how God uh, the biblical way that God gives the gifts, which we have uh, Dr. Perry Stone teaching that along with Dr. Brian Cutshaw and those two founded our school. Uh, but we also dive into things like prophecy, where we have so much talking about current events, prophecy, and uh, matching with Scripture what's going on in the world today and what for sure our expectations we can have of the coming kingdom of Jesus Christ. So uh, that that being said, I would encourage whoever's watching to be able to go and check out our website, isow.org. And we actually have a special deal for any of your viewers, uh, Brother Rod. So basically, we have, we have a promo code. And what you can do is you can go on the website and you're going to get what's called a free variety pack. You can go to isow.org and find the variety pack for yourself, or you can put in, and I'll be looking at this right here, isow.org forward slash rod24, that's R-O-D 24. Um, And once you go to the variety packs, you can choose whichever one you like and put in the promo code bar rod24, R-O-D 24. And that should take off the price for that completely. All all you'd have to do if you want to check that out is pay a $25 student fee, which is creating your own student portal and registering. And then you have that forever. So you can check out what we have to offer through that uh, and see if you like it. You know, we just want you to dive deeper into God's word. But I'm so excited to be able to collaborate with you, Brother Rod. Uh, It's been a pleasure. Yeah, I I really do enjoy it. Um, And I love talking about uh, Judaism and Greek thought uh, and the the differences and how the two came to unite. Now, we'll get into the Jewish thought next time. I I plan on having you back from time to time if that's— you know, if it fits yeah. within your schedule, but I'll I'd have all it. the I'll have all the information that he just gave you in the description. So if you want to take advantage of that uh, opportunity, Matthew, thank you for joining me, and uh, I'll see you in the next Rod and Staff video. God bless. Absolutely.